Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. Got that funk here. One of my favorite people on YouTube is called Bionic Dance. I'll link her channel down below. Chances are high that most people watching this video are already subscribed to her anyway, but you never know. Anyway, Kate um, is reading the King James Version of the Bible, which she originally bought as a prop for a video. And she had resisted reading the Bible all of her life up until now because why, why read a book that's supposed to be the Word of God if there is no God? I mean, you know, it seems a bit superfluous, right? And Kate, to be honest, I actually like that line of reasoning. But I also respect the fact that you're reading the KJV and the reasons that you are reading it, you know, trying to get into the head of the believers and so on. But as I'm sure you've already noticed just from Genesis, the Bible is written in a really weird way. It's incredibly repetitive. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make any sense at all. And it's really, really dry and lugubrious to read. And I would like for, just for the sake of comparison, to share with you some Hindu scripture. Because when it comes to enjoyability, Hindu scripture blows the Bible out of the water by a factor, okay? Because um, you can divorce all the, all the God gobbledygook from this stuff and still find a lot of wisdom in Hindu scripture. I'm going to be reading from the most famous of the Hindu books, which is uh, the Bhagavad Gita. Um, however, the Vedatna, which is a collection of all Hindu scriptures, is massive and includes, you know, Upanishads and Dhammapada and Mahabharata and a whole bunch of others. Um, you, you, you could literally make a lifetime study of Hindu scripture and still probably never read all of it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm digressing. Um, just in case you don't know anything about the story in, in the Bhagavad Gita, it starts off with uh, Krishna in the chariot with Arjuna, who is a prince, and they're about to go to war against another kingdom, which are all his relatives, you know, his cousins and uncles and so forth. And um, Arjuna is struck with um, despair, basically, because he doesn't want to have to kill his own family members. He, he, he thinks he would rather die than do something that seems so obviously wrong. And then Krishna starts discussing with them, you know, the meaning of life. And the whole point of the Bhagavad Gita is it's a metaphor. It's never meant to be taken literally. It never was meant to be taken literally. And, uh, you know, the battle that we're talking about isn't necessarily the battle uh, between one army and another army. It's our, our battle as individuals against the rest of the world. Because everyone in, out there in the world, if you go back far enough, is kin in one way or another. Anyway, um, I'm going to read you a tiny little snippet here because I don't want to bore people with scripture. But um, I just want to read this to you to compare and contrast because uh, I, I think this is actually quite enjoyable. Arjuna says to Krishna, this is um, toward the end of uh, chapter 3, What power is it, Krishna, that drives a man to act sinfully, even unwillingly, as if powerlessly? Krishna replies, It is greedy desire and wrath, born of passion, the great evil, the sum of destruction that is the enemy of thy soul. All is clouded by desire, as fire by smoke, as a mirror by dust, as an unborn babe by its covering. Wisdom is clouded by desire, the ever-present enemy of the wise. Desire, in its innumerable forms, which is like fire, cannot find its satisfaction. Desire has found its place in man's senses and mind and reason. Through these it blinds the soul after having overclouded wisdom. Set thou therefore thy senses in harmony, and then slay thou sinful desire, the destroyer of vision and wisdom. They say the power of the senses is great, but greater than the senses is the mind. Greater than the mind is the buddhi, reason, and greater than reason is he, the spirit in man and in all. Know him therefore who is above reason, and let his peace give thee peace. Be a warrior and kill desire, the powerful enemy of the soul. <clears throat> that ends chapter 3, and I think you will agree at least that that is just so much easier to read, and so it actually makes some sense. Whereas the Bible, you, you, you sort of have to sit there and interpret what you're reading. Um, anyway... This was just for shits and giggles, you know. Um, I don't necessarily expect you to go out and read a Bhagavad Gita, Kate, or anybody else for that matter. But if you're interested in scripture as literature, Indian scripture blows the Bible out of the water.
And um, yeah, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it, god damn it. So this has got that funk, and I hope you all have a very good Sunday. And till next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.